what's up it's martin with analog vibes welcome back to the second part of the second builder legend series and on analog vibes it's all about building your own legendary studio gear and in this series in particular it's about building a very famous passive tube equalizer and um if you're totally new here and you have no clue who i am and what this is all about please go back and watch the first video of this series first because there i'm introducing myself and um um, explaining why, why I'm doing this and what it's all about. So watch this video first and come back later. Right, for the rest, a quick recap what we did last time. I was mostly explaining how the Pultic EQP18 does its magic and how it actually works. And I also gave you an e-paper where I explained the working principle of the Pultic EQP18 in every detail. So if you haven't read it yet, you can still download it and I would highly recommend you do so. It's available right here on the Building Legends series page. Right. So in this video, I actually uh, wanted to talk about the wiring. I wanted to open up a Pultic EQB 1A and take a look at the entire wiring. And I wanted to show you that even though it might look complicated, it's actually not. It's only a matter of deciphering the certain parts and you will see that it's just a couple of wires in every section. But due to the profound feedback I received from you over the last two weeks, which made it very clear for me what your major concerns are, I realized that I have to change my plans. So in this video, I want to show you that building your own analog studio gear is absolutely no rocket science. And just so we are on the same page, when I started doing all this, I had absolutely no clue about electronics. I bet this guy was an electronics genius compared to me. But I made it somehow and I didn't have all these guides and everything. So in this regard, I'd say you are in a very, very luxurious position. But before I go on um, addressing your concerns, let me express some quick um, thank you for your very detailed, personal and helpful feedback. And it really amazes me. I'm, I mean, um, it kind of gives me the feeling that Alan Wipes is on the right track here. I also got the feedback that basically says that our content is very detailed and very informative and interesting. And there's actually not many questions left. Yeah, if that's the case, I'd say we are done for the day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, okay, sorry, but I have one left and it's a serious one and I would like to read it out for you. It's from Florian and he says, I really don't know what to ask for. If you're going to present it the way you did it with the LA2A project, it should be fine. Cause that was just great and definitely next level shit in the world of DIY. Well, thanks Florian, but nope. It's not gonna be the same level as the LA2A project. I'm sorry. It's gonna be one level further. And I think by now it might be clear now we are going for the complete kit, meaning it will include every single component you need to build it. And in terms of documentation, it will include a well-visualized wiring layout and a, a very detailed uh, building guide. Which brings me back to the point of this video. And the point of this video is that even though most of the gear we are talking about here is from the same era as the Apollo space missions. Dude, if this flag was only as easy to set up as the analog vibe kit, would have been done forever. Building the gear is actually no rocket science. So um, in the last video, I already told you what I realized to be the four major concerns or obstacles that you see. First, safety. Second, uh, skills and tools that are necessary. Third, parts. Fourth, troubleshooting. Right, now let's tackle them one by one. The first major concern was safety. Obviously we work with high voltages and we certainly don't want to end up like this guy. Yeah! Okay, let's be serious for a second. I don't want to make a joke of it and I completely understand your concerns or the reservations you might have in regards to uh, working with tube gear. Because even though it's a lot of fun to build your own gear and it can be addictive too, it's absolutely not worth uh, getting injured or even killed for. But also there is absolutely no need to panic. Let me explain. There are some basic rules and precautions uh, that if followed, will make building your gear a safe ride. Some of these rules are obvious and some are less obvious. Meaning, when building the gear, usually no voltage is present because it's really uncommon to build the gear while it's plugged into the mains, right? But 
when voltage becomes relevant is when you have to measure a live unit or if you have to troubleshoot a live unit or for some projects necessary to calibrate them. Not for a tube equalizer, but for others. So in this situation, if you're working on a live unit where you know voltage is present, I uh, included all the precautions and the basic rules you should follow in the e-papers, step by step, what you have to take care of, uh, where you have to be attentive, etc. There might be a situation when it becomes less obvious. If you switch off the unit and unplug it from the mains, that doesn't mean all voltage is gone because there is a certain component, I'm talking about a capacitor, and the capacitor acts like a battery, meaning uh, it can keep the voltage for a pretty long time and much longer than you might expect. So you just have to be aware of it. But even in this case, I explained everything in the e-paper, like how to deal with it and how to drain capacitors if necessary, etc. Apart from that, one major advice I could give you is focus. Don't watch the NBA Finals while building your gear or you're asking for trouble. <laughs> If you build your gear and uh, you, it's you know if, or you finish your piece of gear and it's not working as it should, don't panic. You know uh, it will work eventually. Like through all these years, we've been building gear in the analog lives community. Their success rate has been 100%, which is not too bad. So uh, returning back to the topic, all the situations I can remember where I messed up or um, even got an electric shock was when I lost patience. You know, so stay calm stay focused and um, yeah you will get your gear running the next major concern was skills and tools and um, in regards to tools i tried to list and explain everything that might be relevant for you in the e-paper as well what you might need what might be nice to have etc in regards to skills i totally hear you you know you remember this guy right well what should i say I mean, that's exactly what Analog Vibes and the Build the Legend series is all about, right? Um, providing knowledge about the gear, um, wiring layouts, building guides, etc. You know, in, in the latest e-paper, I also included a link to a very good soldering tutorial and I explained a little bit about, you know, how to approach soldering in general. You can download it right below, check it out. Um, but still, I totally get your point, you know, I've been there too. And um, I remember the major obstacle back then was confidence. You know, like questioning myself whether or not I was capable of pulling it off. And I remember before I built my first hand-wired point-to-point LA-2A, um, I thought it would be a huge undertaking, like very complex, very complicated. And it actually wasn't, you know, it was mostly in my head. And uh, the hardest thing to do was actually to to start doing it, you know, to, to, to do the first step. And that's what I'm trying to do with Analog Vibes is uh, to lower the threshold, you know, to make it accessible, to, uh, um, to make you see that it's, it's not as hard as you might expect. And it might sound a little cheesy, but that's actually the core element of analog vibes. You know, of course we built legendary gear, but uh, the core element is actually to, to, to push your boundaries, you know, to do the things you never thought you could, you know, self-empowerment. <laughs> and seriously, the main benefit through all the, the stuff I did and do here uh, with analog vibes for me personally was the major learning experience, you know, to have a true understanding of how the gear works that I'm using every day. And uh, if something breaks, I can fix it, you know, that's priceless. So yeah, I cannot do the step for you. I can just try to lower the threshold um, to make it accessible for you and to encourage you to try it, right? So number three was parts. Okay, let's get parts for a second because uh, I would like to uh, say a few words about number four first. Troubleshooting. What if uh, you spend hours uh, building a, a piece of gear and then in the end it sounds like It seems like the need to troubleshoot a unit for many of you is like the ultimate nightmare like no troubleshooting. I'll do whatever you want no troubleshooting. Ah, 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 ah. Let me tell you something. 
In all these years since I started to build my own gear, I never learned as much about how a particular unit works as when it didn't work. You know what I mean? Of course, for the most part, it will work from the spot, I'm sure of it. But, um, and the feeling of, uh, you know, just finishing units and uh, switching it on for the very first time and it works from the spot, it's hard to beat, you know. Especially if you've been dreaming of this uh, particular unit for a very long time. And there is a deep impact that this will have on your personality. You have to be, uh, you know, you have to be aware of it and you have to be prepared. I've seen people going all crazy, running around the block all naked, screaming like a weirdo because they were not prepared for the impact this moment would have on their very being. Look what I have created! I have made fire! I... Trust me, you have to be prepared. To be completely honest with you, of course I didn't like it too much when troubleshooting was necessary, but you are in a different situation because here's the thing, you are not alone. You know, the Analog Vibes community is growing and um, I strongly believe or in fact I know that an active community is a huge win for everybody. Like uh, you can exchange your experience and share your problems. Uh, Steven by the way. Nice if you have a problem, you know, um, we'll figure it out together. And until today, um, we always got the gear going. You'll find the link to the community below the video. Right, so um, yeah, one step back now, again, parts. You know, where to get them, which parts to get it all, are they still available, etc. I created an e-paper for you. I don't know if I've mentioned it already. And in the e-paper, there's an entire chapter on parts and how to approach the subject. Please check the e-paper first and if you have any more questions, just let me know. Also, there's a dedicated page that gives you some insights on the components that will be included with the kit. And as mentioned earlier, it's gonna be a complete kit. It's not gonna be an almost complete kit, it's gonna be complete. That means everything will be included, every single part and component and even the wires. And while I'll give you more details on the individual components in the next and last episode, I'll give you a quick preview right now. This here, for example, is the original Pultec bypass switch. Huge, massive switch. It was made by Switchcraft back in the days and it's been out of production for almost 20 years. And Switchcraft will make these available again specifically for the kit, which is amazing. Um, yeah, this here is the original style Pultec inductor, the filter coil. This one is made by Moby Electronics and he's also a member of the Analog Vibes Facebook group. And he makes them as per the original specifications, even potted and beeswax just like the original and they sound great. I already tested them and they are also custom made for the kit. Yes, some more details in the next episode. Before we're done for the day, two more things. One thing is, how can we make it happen? If you joined an Alan Vibes project in the past, you know that we try to achieve these kind of projects through the community. Because at this point, I have no clue how many of you are interested and I cannot just guess how many parts we need to order or have manufactured, nor can I afford it. Right, so what we'll do is after the last episode, I'll open the pre-orders for a limited amount of time and then we can collect orders and then I know exactly how many parts to order and how many parts to have manufactured. And the final thing I can almost see it in your eyes through the camera is the big question, how much will it be? I'm still calculating the last bits and I'm still waiting on the last feedback from one manufacturer so I can't give you the final pricing yet, but uh, since so many of you have been asking, I can give you at least a range. So the entire bundle, including our high quality chassis set, including every single part and component we need, like I said, um, some of them custom made and every single component high end and as close to the original as possible. And of course, including the building guide, which makes this entire thing pretty much painting my numbers and including the wiring layout will come in around like 1300 to 1500 euros. And just to make one thing clear, this is not gonna be like some sort of kind of clone you see nowadays. This is gonna be as close as you could ever get to an original unit without spending a fortune, okay? So that's it for today. Check out the new e-paper. A lot of work went into that. And please leave me some comments. And if you know someone who might be interested, tell them about it because the more we are, the more likely we can make it happen, all right? So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll see you in the last episode for this Build of Legends series. Thank you.